On the second Christmas day, I'm talking to Brett Patterson from the company Write That Name. And Write That Name is a confusing name because it does something completely different. And it has to do something, this company, with an, uh, a total hate I got for a category of products, namely the ones who were messing with my address book. I uh, installed Pluxo a couple of years ago and it basically completely fucked up my address book that made doubles, triples, it changed everything in the way that I... And I'm still suffering from that, uh, from that period. But somebody recommended write that name and I thought I'm not going to play with that, but I did. And, uh, and now I get a daily update uh, from one or two addresses which have been improved because, you know, my phone, number, the phone numbers are better, the addresses are there. So it's a whole category of products improving my address book, which definitely needs some work with an approach I feel a little bit more comf uh, comfortable uh, with. And Brad, you are in uh, you are Paris, but you're definitely not French, right? Right. Uh, may maybe at heart, but uh, I grew up in the U.S., so I've been in Paris for about four years now. Okay. Means you're a very flexible guy, an American in, uh, in Paris. And uh, the company behind uh, Write That Name, can you tell me a little bit about it? Sure. Quad was founded in 2009 by Philippe Laval, uh, and he has a background in computational linguistics and uh, started his own company in the 90s that did enterprise research, so it was semantic-based type uh, uh, work. And so he wanted to make email easier and make it more intelligent and made a smart assistant for email. And so Quagga was founded in 2009, and after four beautiful pivots, we uh, found the real winner with Write That Name and launched it in 2011. And uh, the team is, uh, I think there's four PhDs in computational linguistics, and uh, we're expanding from there. So it's some, some, some wonderful linguistic nerds that, that match, uh, match their yeah. you know, you, programming you talent you, with that done... as well. You've done four pivots, or they've done four pivots until they found uh, right that name. What were the other three? Um, there was a Chrome plugin that basically uh, extracted information from your emails, and if you had a, uh, if you had someone that was asking a question, it would it would say that you need to reply to it. If it, uh, there was another Chrome plugin that did. Uh, anything that people didn't reply to, so you can ask them again. Um, it was working on contextual uh, hints within the email. Oh. And then there was another one that kind of like boxcar showed you when your important emails were in your inbox. So those were the three main pivots. Yeah. Well, but I mean, so basically making, uh, making email more intelligent, uh, which is definitely something which is completely underestimated and which we definitely need if we see how much time we spend an email uh, it definitely could be more intelligent but you have a very very simple goal with write that name and what yes. is it what is it <laughs> uh, it's it's to take the information the wealth that is in emails and without you doing anything to put that information into your address book so write that name will analyze the emails that you get every day and anyone that has a signature it will add that all of that information into your address book so Whenever you need to contact them, as, as opposed to searching through emails, you know, it's, it's in your address book, which is easily synced with your phone and anywhere else, and it's right at your fingertips. Yeah. Um, so, um, the, previous, uh, the previous company, what, what was Pluxo, did all kinds of things which I didn't want to do. It, it added all kinds of things. It doubled all kinds of things. It really, I really hated it. And um, uh, what... What don't you do? What, what, what is the service limited to so that you don't uh, mess with my address book? Well, one thing that we don't ever do is we don't remove information that you've put there. So your address, your address book is yours, and we just improve it if there's space to improve. So if you have uh, already someone's telephone number that's not in their signature, we're not going to change that. Um, we're going to add to a work category or an other category for a telephone number, for example. Um, and then, you know, we'll basically, we improve on anything that's there and anything that's new that's coming in, new contacts that you've never talked to before, we'll, we'll obviously create a new, uh, a new uh, entry for them as well. Okay, and so every any, email... It changes, every... this is the last point, mm -hmm. is anything that if you write me and then you change your phone number a week later, we actually go back and check and verify all that as well. So it's continually creating and updating your address book. Yeah, so every, but everybody who I email to gets, becomes uh, an entry in my address book. Yes. Okay. 
that I really would like to keep, you know, very much limited because I mean I have a lot of people I don't want in my address book. How can I deal with that? Can I always find out the the, the entries which are done by um, write that name? Sure. So that's a great question. There's two uh, actually methods of using write that name. One is automatic. So anyone that writes you and that you actually write back to, because if you don't write to them, then they're not what we call a trusted source. We won't add them. So if it's not a pertinent update, if you haven't had a real conversation with that person, the automatic mode is not going to update it. The second mode is called manual mode, and that's where you approve and change any of the new people that are that would be added. So if you don't want someone added, you can blacklist them. They they're no, they'll never be added. Um, and so manual mode gives you a little bit more control over what you're putting into your address book. Okay. Yeah. So that is a lot. Uh, that's a lot handier. Can you uh, show me how it works? Um, you on your screen? Um, I can I can give you an idea. The the service basically works through email. Um, so every day you'll get uh, an email if you've had new updates come in. So this is the email that I get. You know, uh, almost on a daily basis. You can see all the information that's coming through on uh, a few of the contacts that I just talked to. So it's. Uh, I don't see it yet. Okay. Um, so basically it's an, an email update that you get and you can choose if you want to get one every day, if you want to get one every week, or if you just want to do it every month. Um, and it will, it will email you all of the new information and if you're in automatic mode, it automatically updates it. If you're in manual mode, well then you can choose which ones to save, you can edit them. Um, so really the system works pretty much in the background. You don't do anything outside of approve or not approve updates. Yeah. Are you, you are you, you trying can to show me something? How often you want to approve those? Uh, are you, are but it's really kind of a set it and forget it, and yeah, most no, of the people the, really love of, that it works in the background the things, without you doing much. That's one of the things I love. I don't see a screen now of yours. Do do you have a? Did you put screen sharing on because it suddenly wasn't visible? I'll try to add it again. Mm -hmm. uh, share screen. Press the plus button and say share screen. That looks more. It's now starting to do that. Uh, Great. Yeah. Okay. So this is the um, this is the email you receive when you're in automatic mode, and that's the thing I have to. We found free context to update, and that is basically from the analyzing the analyzing the um, the yeah. signature in the email. It does this once a day. The system actually only works your uh, the system only looks your email once a day, uh, and then it'll update those if there's something new or if you've contacted someone new. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, but now I want to know, I have, uh, for example, if I now click on mine, let me go to my, uh, if you stop sharing your screen. Yeah. Yeah, you need to stop sharing your screen. Yeah, there, there you are. And now I'm sharing my screen. Okay. And now I see, uh, okay, here are my contacts. I have 5,000 contacts. You know, wow. huge amount of contacts, lots, lots, and lots, and lots of them, sure. and but now if I say, um, um, if I now say uh, write that name, write that name, I would expect all the ones uh, to see all the ones which basically have been um, uh, which have been changed by you. Sure. So actually what there is, there's a label and you can see it under my contacts. It's about the fifth one down. It says write that name. So if you click on that, that'll be all the ones that we've changed. Oh, okay. So I cannot use it in search, but these ones, these, these are the ones you have uh, selected. Okay. Great. And I search it actually should have shown you a label, write that name, but yeah, sometimes it, things can be a little bit glitchy. It should have showed you though. Yeah. But yeah, um, you re review all the ones that we've changed there. Yeah. So this one goes slowly, slowly, one, uh, one address at a time. If I want to change my whole address book, what is the, um, uh, if I want to, if you want to go, I want you to go and update everything. How do I do that? So we have a, a second service which is called Flashback. Uh, and Flashback is, is basically like the daily service, except instead of just analyzing what comes in every day and comparing it to what we have in our system or what you have in your address book, it actually goes back one year, or we can do more years. I, I just did one for someone uh, this past week for seven years. It was like 
250,000 emails. Um, so we can go back and analyze every email that you've received from contacts and make sure that you have the most up-to-date information. So if you had something in 2006 from them, but in 2011 they changed their telephone, well then we'll only take that information from 2011. Yeah, that um, will be a very... Um that will be a very nice one. So I'm now logged in to uh, write that name with my user account. So how do I now say, please update everything? Sure. So on the fourth tab, there's a flashback. Yeah. Right. So it would be there. And uh, at that point, it's a, it's a plan that you can purchase. It's a one-time uh, plan. Oh, OK. Yeah. So you pay, basically, uh, the fact that I have a subscription of your service till whatever, half a year. That doesn't take advantage of. I have to pay. It's paid. It's paid. It's paid separately for that. It's one-time service. And actually, one really cool thing that you can see is the tab just to the right of it called the Thanks Barometer. Um, that's a referral program that we just launched about a month ago, and yeah, that I is one that. way of actually sharing. Write that name, and through sharing, you can actually get a free flashback. What's the button? You know, if you rise the barometer up to thirty per thirty, you can get fifty. Off. So we're trying to encourage uh, our users to, to get great deals and also you yeah. know, to yeah. help us expand the platform. I have 20 credits racked up and I can cash them in. How much credits do I need for uh, a one-time shot? For a one-time shot, the, the, uh, so right so now you have 25% off because anything over 15 credits would be 25% off. And if you tweeted or if you did a blog post, that'd be another 13 credits. So then you'd have 50% off at 30 credits. And if, say, five people signed up, then you'd already have a, a free flashback. Yeah. So okay. for each person that signs up, it's five more credits. And then all of those actions that you see there also are two or three credits or 10 credits. Yeah. Yeah. So... Pretty smart, uh, pretty smart way to get me uh, to get me interested into this uh, into this thing. If I don't want to pay, I can basically get my friends to pay for me, or I can just uh, pay for it. And the and the flashback uh, the flashback service is really nice. Okay, well, so that answers the question of how your business uh, model uh, works. How many people are you now in the company? Uh, there are about ten of us. Uh, there's some people that are part time, but the, the the core team is about ten. Uh, and uh, yeah, about half the people working on the product itself, expanding it uh, from from the programming side, and then uh, a number of people doing business dev and marketing, and then myself as the community manager. Yeah, and you're very active. You've been, I've been already approached from three times through your tweets. One time because I used uh, I used it to recommend it, and somebody else recommended me, and so it's really nice. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, try to buy the flashback. Oh, I have one question. I have a, um, I have an, an my um, upstairs, Vince, upstairs at the bed. Um, I have one question. I have two email accounts. Uh, one old Gmail account, which goes four back uh, back four years, and one email account which goes back one year. Right. And so I would like to use. I would like to have the context of Gmail account one to be improved by Gmail account two. Is that possible? Absolutely. We have a, a program, or not a program, but a, I guess a part of the platform that's called multi account. So you can choose whichever account you want to be your master account. So if you have a personal email and a work email, and you want them all to go into the personal, or if you want them all to go into the work, or if you want them to stay one and one and one and one, you can choose all those things. So there's a way to um, to decide if you want to have a main address book. Mm -hmm. so if you wanted to do that, you could sign up the second account and and have all of the conversations or all of the address book additions go into one main account. Oh, yeah, I'm doing it right now. Do I do I need an, an ex buy an extra account for that, or is that all in one in this in the subscription fee? Have one premium subscription, or when you're on the free trial, you can add up to three accounts. Um, and then there's also another plan where you can add as many accounts as you want. So right now you're on the the free trial plan, so you can add an account. The only slight hitch is that you have to sign up that account and write that name, and then add it. What do you mean by that? Say that again. I have to. You have to sign up the second account that you want. You have to sign up the second Gmail account. Basically, you have to give us the permissions for us to uh, analyze those emails as well. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ach, nege, ach, Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see that. 
great. Well, Brett, I must say uh, it is really it is really so necessary to work on the address book, and uh, so it's a very useful service. Um, of course, what I like to have too um, is next to this service. I like to improve my address book with LinkedIn and sure. with my Facebook. How how what are you going to do with that? Is, so that, that, is that something you're thinking of? Uh, one of the things that we've been wanting to do for a while is to anyone that uh, you're adding and on write that name to automatically propose you to link with them on LinkedIn. Um, and then we, I think in the next six months, we want to do API connections with Facebook so that you can have photos if you want. A lot of users ask for that. And obviously uh, be able to rely on the LinkedIn information to pull that as well. So right now, our, our main strength is obviously analyzing email signatures, but there's a lot of space to uh, improve and, and, and make the, uh, your address both even, even wealthier with information. Okay. At, uh, and all at the same time, staying kind of in the background, because I think that's what our users really like. The, the, yeah, you are very... You're not very happened. intrusive. You basically ask me to send it once a month, once a week, once every day. And uh, yeah, so you're... And you slowly allow me to get into it instead of Pluxo, who takes over everything and just pisses me off. How how big is Pluxo nowadays? You know, uh, I don't I don't really know. Um, they obviously in the address book market, but they're they're doing something different than us. It's not uh, uh, our our approach is different, so we're not butting heads on the exactly the same clientele. Um, they're they're a little bit more on sync too. Uh, we're we uh, we know that Google does that well, and there's lots of third-party services that do that pretty well as well. So that isn't somewhere we've, we've expanded yet. Okay. All righty. Hey, thank you very much on this uh, Christmas Day, Brett, to uh, tell me about a really nice product from France. Appreciate it. My pleasure. It was great talking to you, Vincent. Have a good day.